Hello, my name is Caroline Anderson. I'm a graduate research assistant in University of Central Florida's Aerospace Engineering Doctoral Program. Today I will be discussing development of a computational model of precipitation droplet breakup within hypersonic flow. This presentation will discuss the hazards of precipitation for vehicles traveling at hypersonic regime and explore the mechanisms driving droplet breakup. The study focuses on the role of cavitation, given identification of low-pressure regions forming within a droplet and traversing an oncoming shock. The model presented is a multi-stage system combining CFD data with the numerical differential equation solver to closer observe cavitation. The system was developed in retrospective of former studies observing rain droplet behavior in supersonic conditions. Following the methodology, results and conclusions are discussed and concluded with comments on plans for future work. Rain droplets interacting with vehicles traveling at hypersonic speeds pose a multitude of threats. To further develop these systems as hypersonic travel steps into reality, it is important to evaluate their operability in atmospheric conditions. This is of immediate concern to vehicles entering and exiting planetary atmospheres from surface level. An approximation of force, assuming rain droplets to be nearly spherical, directly scales cubic to droplet diameter and quadratic to the relative velocity of the droplet. Estimations show forces in excess of tensile yield strength of common exterior materials. Aside from posing physical damage, the droplet's interaction with the shock layer can alter the vehicle's effective aerodynamic heating and stability characteristics. Seen in an experimental study at NASA Marshall Flight Research Center, the droplets entering the shock layer develop bow shocks of their own and impact the flow near the surface as well as the vehicle bow shock. To predict droplet mass and form for impacting conditions, the study considers the variety of conditions expected to impact droplet breakup. The traditional use of Weber number identifies droplet form when subjected to a range of Reynolds numbers. Other factors include those unique to new hypersonic flow, such as the potential for gas rarefication and water vaporization at high external temperatures seen in post-shock flow. Finally, the study analyzes the focus of cavitation within the droplet as internal pressures fluctuate after transmission of an acoustic wave. The breakup of droplets can be classified by a range of Weber numbers, which evaluates the inertial force encountered by the droplet in comparison to the fluid surface tension. General forms classified by experimental results in Moylan are seen. To the left is a CFD analysis of Weber number near a leading edge in Mach 6 flow. For these hypersonic speeds, the higher form of sheet stripping is expected near droplet demise. Outer layers of the droplet are directly sheared away by the high local inertia forces and dispersed as mist behind the main droplet mass. This is indicative to a droplet lifespan, but with respect to the impact time of the droplet to the vehicle, in high temperatures of hypersonic flow, aerodynamic heating can create conditions that heat local gas to a rarefied state. In order to verify use of the ideal gas model that relies on continual mechanics, rather than a real gas model dependent on statistical mechanics, the Knudsen number is mapped to identify if such model outside continuum assumptions is necessary. The contours indicated regions within droplet trajectory are within continuum limits, for droplet diameters on millimeter scale at selected altitude. As a note, smaller droplets may fall into a rarefied slip regime. Also an effect of high local temperatures post-shock is heat transfer from the external gas to the droplet. Temperatures within a hypersonic shock layer are well exceeding water vaporization temperature but the vaporization of a droplet will depend on the rate of heat transfer across the gas fluid interface. The magnitude of heat transfer felt by the droplet is evaluated in two methods with conservative assumptions. In the first, a stream tube analysis takes an integral of total energy within the droplet trajectory, assuming that all energy within the tube is transferred perfectly. Calculations with respect to the energy of vaporization for a droplet of equivalent mass yield 0.66 total mass loss within impact time. 
A secondary analysis for comparison refers to the chilton colburn analogy defined in Toronto in 2013. A mass transfer coefficient is identified by the Sherwood number, which represents the convective mass transfer rate to diffusive mass transport rate. Frosling's correlation is used to define Sherwood number in terms of Reynolds number and Schmidt number. Progressing with this calculation yields a mass evaporative rate and projects 0.7% of total droplet mass loss within the impact time. After evaluating these impacting conditions and relevant mechanism timescales via initial CFD simulations, it is concluded that rarefied flow is not present to the droplet length scale of study, and the evaporative potential and time scale of question is minimal. Thus, the model chooses to focus on breakup mode and the effects of cavitation. The model progression is as follows. A vehicle scale CFD solves for a steady state hypersonic flow field and provides data for conditions a droplet experiences relative to the oncoming vehicle. The next stage uses this droplet trajectory data to calculate relative velocity and project the droplet travel in terms of time. This data is transferred to the next CFD stage that is on the scale of a single droplet and uses a boundary condition to simulate the droplet traveling through the hypersonic flow profile. Pressure is recorded through time within the droplet radius and is fed to the final stage that employs the rayleigh facet equation to predict the growth of an internal bubble, where air attaches to particles within the droplet, such as dust. Growth of internal bubbles near time of impact are indicative to how cavitation will affect droplet breakup and provides insight to impacting mass size and shape. The first CFD stage establishes a steady hypersonic field around the DARPA hypersonic 6 degree blunt wedge at altitude conditions of 4 km. Meshes were fined to the order of tenths of a millimeter. A coupled solver utilizing the Awesome Plus scheme focuses on shock capturing. The model is verified in former study of wedge geometry at Mach 6 testing. This flow is then set to disperse multi-phase flow, seeding the flow with rain droplets of millimeter diameter. A droplet on course to collide with the leading edge of the wedge is targeted. This streamline is designated to traverse from static flow through the bow shock and up to the leading edge. This streamline records properties of pressure, temperature, gas velocity, and rain droplet phase velocity along its length. This data is used in the next stage of the model. Local velocity experienced by multiphase particles within the vehicle stage model are evaluated by use of cliff galvin coefficient of drag model for spherical particles at high Reynolds numbers. Corresponding hydraulic drag forces yield the droplet's relative velocity. Also gleaned from the velocity and distance traveled is time to relate the steady state CFD to unsteady droplet CFD simulation. This addended data is then exported to use as a time variant boundary condition within the next stage. The droplet scale CFD looks at the droplet on a finer mesh scale of microns. The simulation is in an axisymmetric frame and is the most complex stage of the collective model. The addended streamlined data is implemented in a time varying inlet, C right boundary, for velocity and temperature profiles and pressure outlet at the opposite end. Valerian volume of fluid method defines the rain droplet using explicit volume tracking with a marker function between the phases and conservation of mass to ensure balance at the interface. The water phase is defined by an equation of state that defines water density and density pressure derivative according to Tate's state equation for compressibility. This fluid state equation model is formally verified in a bulk cavitation modeling study by Esplin in underwater shock induced cavitation. The gas phase adheres to the ideal gas model. Surface tension of the water is identified for the multi-phase interaction. Within the droplet, a point grid records pressure through time. This data is then passed on to the final stage. The final stage is a numerical solver of the pressure time data. This evaluates the growth of a gas bubble estimated at dust particle size of 10 microns while the region goes through pressure fluctuations from the acoustic wave transmitted via shock. 
By mass and momentum conservation, the Navier-Stokes equations are reduced to the differential equation recognized as rayleigh poisset Following reduction, assuming thermal effects negligible to the majority of droplet mass, the droplet expansion is calculated for the period which the surrounding fluid absolute pressure declines into negative values. This coupling of CFD data to the numerical cavitation solver is where the study provides novel contribution of cavitating region data to the droplet breakup question. Substantial bubble growth and the presence of cavitation during droplet breakup changes the effective structure, and thus the form of breakup is different to the expected Weber range mode. The model refers to a supersonic case of shock interaction with water droplet, where cavitation is observed within a larger droplet in Mach 2.4 flow. Experimental setup from Sembian 2016 includes pressure sensors within the droplet radius and serves as a comparison for model performance. CFD simulation yielded more pronounced pressure ratios, but similar profiles to the experimental sensors within the droplet radius and comparable pressure scalars through the shock traversing time. This validation case also gave a visual base for how the hypersonic flow impact differs from the lower Mach impact in the supersonic regime. The droplet scale simulation shows onset of shock from time varying inlet boundary and frame of the droplet traveling toward leading edge through the shock layer. The compression wave is transmitted to the droplet fluid, focused by the opposite side curvature and reflected as an expansion wave. The expansion wave drops local pressure into the range of negative 20 atmospheres, exceeding water tension pressure for gas bubbles to grow and expand into collapse. As the simulation progresses, the droplet begins to deform into the shear stripping form, as expected of the recorded Weber number range. It is noted, however, that both of these are seen post time of impact, thus implying that the droplet meets the leading edge in spherical form. The droplet point grid data is analyzed in the numerical cavitation solver, assuming an average dust particle size at 10 micron. The bubble of local air is seen to expand to 135% its initial size due to the local pressure drop within the period of 0.1 microseconds, and then oscillates as the pressure fluctuates. The resulting volume increase of the bubble is 250% its initial size. In conclusion, this model proved a computationally cheap method of initial evaluation of droplet cavitation and was completed within several hours. The pressure drop induced by a shock transmission in the hypersonic regime confirmed potential conditions of cavitation within the droplet. The time scale of cavitation seen in this study is in excess of the impact time, but warrants further investigation into higher Mach numbers and various atmospheric conditions. The effects of cavitation growth magnitude and period are expected to increase with rising Mach number based on observations from the supersonic validation case. Future work also includes a variety of streamlined positions leading to the vehicle body, including glancing trajectories and further down cord. The breakup of droplet affects the fluid domain nearby and reasonably suggests a two-way coupling to the vehicle stage flow simulation. Finally, modeling the droplet impact to surface reflection into the shock layer is desired to examine the effects on the boundary layer. The following are work cited in the model development and grateful acknowledgement to these former efforts on the topic. I would like to also acknowledge the UCF MAE department for funding in this research effort and colleagues of the Computational Fluids Lab for their support and assistance. A gracious thanks to Dr. Kinzel and Dr. Fontes for their contributions as well as their mentoring.